Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the most important weekly wrap-up in your news, brought to you by a very, very important journalist and scientist who has the pronouns hee-haw. What happened this week? Well, who cares? Because guess what? I'm doing the whole episode like this because it's Pride Week. Time to see guys in assless chaps walking down the street so I can just be scared to talk to my daughter about gay pride. Can you please move that fucking festival of leather to the nighttime? We support gay rights. I don't support seeing your asshole before 12 noon. Juneteenth should definitely be a holiday. Uh, It is actually right now National Mascot Day. So there's a fucking holiday for mascots, but not one for the end of slavery. Go fuck yourself, USA. If I was black, I'd punch me in the face too. Um, John Stewart went on Colbert and created a no-no and broke Facebook's policy. And Vice Magazine doesn't know what you're doing itself. Can't compute. Can't compute. Liberal John Stewart saying that it was a laboratory leak. Can't compute. Colbert, are we going to get canceled? Can't compute. Can't compute. He's a Nazi, but he's a Jew. He's a white supremacist, but he's a Jew. I am Yanni Long Days and that's all got all else. Somebody just said, what we doing now? (laughs) What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Long Days with Giannis Pappas. Thank you for joining me. We know that you have a lot of options and podcasts to watch. Um, And we appreciate you here stopping on your scroll and hopefully getting past the first few minutes so I can get paid by my Google advertisers. Hope you stick around. I mean, what else are you doing, really? I mean, Chinese are making all your stuff. You don't need to go to work. You need to grind. So you can watch this podcast and definitely grind. We are the grind-friendly podcast. You can have it on the background while you sit there and call your boys and, yes, son, yes, son, I love that idea, son. We're going to do that, too. We're going to do that, too. Come over with the weed and let's grind. Let's think of more things to grind about. What a fucking week for the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court was in action this week, working the justices, the the men in cloaks that uh, really dictate a lot of what happens in this country. And a lot of people, you know, at least used to be like the Robert Borks, the old school conservatives used to call it the runaway Supreme Court because they have too much power. Do they have too much power? Should we expand the court? I don't know. I don't know. I know that um, the liberals wanted to expand the court because fucking Trump, Trump selected how many? 27 judges did he put on there? He stacked the court. So then all of a sudden the liberals are like, let's expand it. Let's expand it so we can get more Libby's on there. It's fucking team basketball dogs and root for your hometown, okay? It's even team basketball on the Supreme Court. And the rulings are usually looked at through the filter of, does this work for me as a right-wing guy or does this work for me as a left-wing lady? I'm talking to the fellas as well. So the Supreme Court was very busy. First off, let's talk about their first ruling, which was rejecting a lawsuit. Um, First of all, if you can name all 15, what is it, nine or 15? How many on the squad? Nine. Nine, okay? That's nine. You got a fucking, you got a starting five and then four off the bench. Who's the sixth man of the year? Clarence Thomas. He puts pubic hairs on coke cans. (laughs) He was the original Me Tooer, too. Because does anyone really believe that story? You know what I'm saying? Who's to know that the liberals don't go after anyone who's not? If you're against abortion, if you are against abortion, you better be careful because your car might explode. I mean, they put a hit out on you, dog, if you are against abortion. So I don't know if you guys know about the Anita Hill situation, but he was the original. What was the guy who just got me to 
by um by that brave brave woman who said that some guy grinded on her at a party and held her down while the other friend laughed. Kavanaugh, 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 Kavanaugh. And then what was her name? Come on, um, uh, the Blasey Ford. Uh, yeah, Blasey Ford. As I like, I like to call her, female Jesus, <laughs> who came to save us. Um, the original Supreme Court nominee who was uh, me too and this was after he was already on the bench, was Clarence Thomas. And one of the things Anita Hill said that he did was put a pubic hair on a Coca-Cola can, <laughs> which I don't know about what your moves are. I don't know how you like to pick up ladies, but, you know, that just sounds like that comes from the imagination of a woman. I'm not sure. I don't know what happened. I don't remember the rest of the details. I'm not va- trying to not validate her experience. I'm just saying, I've known a lot of dudes. I've hit on a lot of girls, even though I'm shy. I've spoken to a lot of dudes who've hit on girls. Not one of them was like, yo, dog, chill, chill, chill. Don't tell them you're a minor league baseball player. Don't take out your American Express black card. Don't take her to a comedy show so you can see your charisma. Don't show him your haircut that you got from Drew's barber that he will make us reschedule this podcast so he can get a haircut. Don't show him that fly fucking Crips hair. Okay, don't grow a fucking nice beard like Jesse Scatora show a fucking sculpture that he can do with his fucking hands because the kid's a finger painter. Don't try to impress him that way. The way, you, what the broads want, what the broads really want is a single pubic hair on their ginger ale can. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've covered the important parts of the history of the Supreme Court, let's talk about these things that I got sidetracked for. The first one is... Um, it was brought before the Supreme Court that a Catholic charities rejected a same-sex couple to give a kid to. And that couple probably sued. And when they sued, they probably sued like that. They fucking, you know what I'm saying? I think it was two guys. So they definitely were like, fuck your church. Fuck you, you fucking child fuckers. Fuck you. And the Supreme Court up, threw out, didn't upheld. They threw out the lawsuit against the Catholic charities saying that it violated their first amendment or some bullshit like that. So, okay. There's a few things to unpack here. Don't liberals like to say unpack. They love saying, let me unpack this. <laughs> they, they, you give them a statement. They're like, okay, first off, let's unpack the morality of that. And then let's unpack why you're a Nazi. Okay. First amendment. Yeah. That's interesting. That's an interesting thing. If they were suing, if they were getting sued um, because the couple was saying you can't say something, doesn't seem like they said something. It says like they seems like they did something. I I got my legal expert here, Mike Emoji Face Suarez, who, who I'm glancing at, who is a law clerk of the year. Did a little time in Justice Thompson's uh, fucking Justin Thompson's office and used to put pubic hairs on all the girls' coke cans for him. Talk about a fucking internship in the summer of '89. <laughs> But the Supreme Court is fucking showing its colors here a little bit, in my opinion. And those colors are red. Because I don't know if this violates the First Amendment of the Catholic Church charities. Because the First Amendment's about speech. This is an action where they their action was refused to act. So um, that's not a First Amendment issue. That's more of a, hey, let's take a look at the track record of this gay couple and let's take a look at the track record of this Catholic charities. I'm going to say fuck you. I'm going to thumbs down the Supreme Court. I'm going to give them one rotten tomato on this, Jesse Scatoro, because I think they did a boo-boo here because any time the state can facilitate or enforce getting a child away from the hands of Catholics, I think that's a, that's a good thing. I think that should be like, hey, we're not even gonna go to trial. We wanna get this over. We wanna adjudicate this quickly. Let's go to mediation and the mediation will take two seconds because that child will be released from your clutches, you historically raping of children organization. Why is the Catholic church even allowed to fucking rent out kids? Why are they allowed to be an adopted kid store? That store should be fucking closed down. 
If they were raping children in the basement of fucking Target, Target would be shut down. Guess where they are raping children? Guess where they are fucking making children into adrenochrome supply for the fucking machines in Tom Hanks' house? Okay, because if you go in Tom Hanks' basement, that shit looks like a fucking bar keg in the basement. Where, like a 7-Eleven Slurpee machine, the adrenochrome goes up and makes Bloody Marys for fucking his friends like John Stamos. Okay, also in the Vatican, is there, there's just a bar in the Vatican that has a tap and it says Filipino, Chinese, <laughs> Italian, Euro, Caucasian, South Asian. And guys just roll up and say, can I get an adrenochrome Bloody Mary? And they go, absolutely, and how would you like your eggs? And do you want extra horseradish in, in your Thai, in your Thai boy, Bloody Mary? The moral high ground is not possessed by Catholic charities in this point. I would have um, looked at this lawsuit if I was the justices. But, of course, we got some fucking Catholics on there, right? We got Justice Thompson is a Catholic. We got Kennedy. Is Kennedy still on there? Kennedy's a Catholic. And, of course, the fucking the Catholic of them all, Kavanaugh. Kenny Kavanaugh. Okay? So... I think they're showing their colors here, and those colors are blood for the Virgin Mary and blood for the Republican Party red because they should look into the background of these gay guys and say, what have they done? And if all they've done is go to a few raves, do a little ecstasy, and lick peanut butter off each other's assholes, that's a safe environment for the child. That's a loving environment. What do they do? Did they watch um, Will and Grace reruns? Do they candle shop together? Do they antique? I mean, do they, does one hairstyle for the other? Do they watch Real Housewives reruns? I mean, God bless, is there anything more responsible in a template? If you were to, on paper, is there any two people more responsible on paper than two gay guys that decide to settle down? <laughs> There's nothing more conservative than that. This irony is conservatives, a lot of conservatives in the far right hate gays. Here's the deal. If two gay guys get off Grindr to settle down and watch fucking TV reruns together, they are 10 times more conservative than you, guy. 10 times more conservative. That's the most conservative fucking person on the planet or persons or however they identify. So to give a child to two men who want to settle down is probably the safest place for that kid to go, all right? You don't want to give that kid to fucking Mike Emoji Face. That kid would throw that fucking child in the backpack and then take him on a bus to the Long Day studio in Bay Ridge and then take a hit of his inhaler and then forget to feed the kid because Mike ate his food too. And Mike's a single straight man. So why the fuck... Would A, not the Supreme Court, countersue Catholic Churchery, the Catholic Churchery, come on, man, <laughs> for having children? And second, fuck you. They should be sued and they should get that kid. They should get that kid. I wish I was raised by two gay men. Are you kidding me? I was raised by a traumatized war survivor from the island of Crete who purported to be a communist but liked to wear Fendi shoes and signed her Christmas cards, Sincerely, Dearest Mother. Dearest Son Yanni, and then she would, she would copy and paste a poem, like she was Melania Trump. She'd steal a speech from Obama, Obama's <laughs> wife, and put it in my Christmas card, and then sign it, Sin Sincerest, Your Dearest Mother, Dr. Anna Mamalakis Pappas. No. <laughs> and she wasn't a doctor, she just had a JSD in law that she never did anything with except sue the hell out of my dad for half of his fucking money. So I would have loved to be fucking brought up by a guy named Dale and Trevor who got up and made my lunch. Are you kidding me? And made sure I had a quinoa salad and Brussels sprouts instead of my mother giving me $5 and if, so I can take it to Wendy's and buy a beef jerky stick while they worked 24 hours a day and ignored me. So boo on the Catholic church on this one. But guess what? The Catholic Church has a mixed record because I'm going to go thumbs up on Obamacare. So it looks like they've upheld another challenge to Obamacare, which is, I think this is the third. So you know if you do three, you know what I mean? You're good. 
You know you're good. Yeah, if you get to three dates with a chick, you know what I mean? And you don't cancel because you got a haircut on that day. <laughs> Do you, I think Drew has three times said, yo, uh, yo, low key. Of course, he says low key and dead ass because he's fucking just graduated. First of all, we're going to take him to Blue Agave to get him a quesadilla because he graduated from New Jersey fucking patent school. But there's been three or four times Drew's been like, wait, 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 hold on, dead ass. Um, yo, low key, what time, what time are we shooting? It's like, yo, dude, I can't. Al's got to cut my hair, dog. I mean, and let me tell you something, Drew. I was a little skeptical. I was going like, why is Drew making us reschedule because of his hair? And then I see your fucking haircut and I'm going, yo, Al, shout outs because <laughs> the kid is clean and crispy. That is one of the dopest fades I've seen on a white guy in a long time. I'm about to fucking buy your mixtape and you don't even have one. <laughs> Either that because of the army's going to draft you because that is a tight fucking colonel fade. You're going to get mad pussy, son, and trans penis if you prefer. With that, with that fucking fake, and dog. it's a week old. It's a week old too. Y'all hurt. Um, so they upheld Obamacare. That's three, three times. So I think at this point we can say Obamacare has become kind of the law of the land. And the irony of it is, um, it's been, it's grown in popularity. I think a lot of people on the right, it's like. Their closet cases, like you know how a lot of people are in the closet with their sexuality. Um, I think a lot of Republicans are in the closet with liking their Obamacare. You know what I'm saying? Because they get cheap insurance for the first time, they can get that fucking first health plus or whatever. I got Obamacare. Okay, now you don't go. You don't. Obamacare doesn't take you to the Fifth Avenue doctor. Okay, okay. Your doctor may be a child or a 95 year old man. <laughs> But he does have a medical degree hanging on his wall. And let's be honest, most of the medical care is placebo anyway. Because you're going to die when you're going to die. Jesse Scatero hasn't been to the doctor in 40 years. But you know what? He eats fucking granola and salad and kale. And he sculpts. And the kid's in good shape. And he walks. So that's a good thing. So Obama here, at this point, I think Obama tweeted his victory. And his comments are going to be the fucking, the trolls going, You motherfucker. Just a bunch of dirks. You ruined this goddamn country. I'll be right back in this Twitter feed to tell you how much of a motherfucker you are. But I got to use my Obamacare and go pick up my pregnant lady, Rosie, who works at the door, brother. We had to go get a, she had to go get an echocardiogram of our baby because uh, Rosie likes to use pills, brother. She likes pills, brother. So please don't give Rosie any pills if you come to the Pink Lagoon Crock Pit Flamingo, brother. Don't pay her in pills so you can get in free of charge because that is hurting my baby. But in the meantime, I will use my Obamacare insurance to cover that exam. That cursory exam, brother. So there are a lot of closeted cases of Republicans who like their Obamacare. Hey, it's not a perfect system. And let's remember, it's a Mitt Romney Republican idea from Massachusetts. Obamacare is a Republican system, right? It's like, kind of like a forced free market system. And that's the thing. Republicans, they're, the, the Republicans are just as fucking annoying as the libs to me. Okay, first of all, because they're human. So that's one strike against them. I don't like humans. Secondly, they're fucking always hypocritical. It's like, they, always, they slammed Obamacare, and then you're like, hey, man, but Obamacare is like a Republican idea. And they're like, fuck you, fairy. You know? <laughs> they don't even want to listen. It's like, dude, that's from Massachusetts. That's Mitt, Mitt Romney care, right? Initially, it's a Republican idea. It's a free market idea. It's basically a regulated free market idea in a lot of ways. But it's a right-wing idea. The Republicans came up with that shit. A, a Republican came up with that shit. And then now... Here's a good one that I like. Here's another example of this hypocrisy is, uh, I think his name is Republican Andrew Clyde. Not Andrew Malik, Andrew Clyde. I think Andrew Malik's uh, term's over in Congressman of fucking Jersey City. So Republican Andrew Clyde uh, refused to shake hands with uh, Michael Fanone, which if you don't watch the clip, I don't think anyone would pronounce that spelling Fanone. I think uh, it's Fanoni or Fanuki. Depending on <laughs> what your opinion is on what he did at the Capitol riots, because he was a Capitol Hill police officer, Mr. Michael Fanook. <laughs> so if you're watching, uh, let's say you were watching, what's some right wing comedy show right now? They'd probably call him Michael Fanooki. 
okay? But I'm going to call him by his Italian name, Michael Fanone, okay? Michael Fanone cares about his mother, <laughs> all right? And he does discipline his wife if this fucking garlic's not too thin, okay? And more than once has he gone to his grandmother's house and sat down in the living room and heard a squeak. And when he was with a friend, he was like, did you fart? And he said, no, that's my grandmother's plastic on a good sofa, a few times has he slept. A few times has he fallen asleep at his mother's house when he got into a fight with his wife and he drooled onto plastic and it didn't dry up because it was drool on plastic because he was sleeping on his mother's couch. <laughs> Michael Fanone. So Michael Fanone was snubbed by Andrew Clyde. Cracker Jack is playing three games at the same time. Comment roulette. Last man standing. Thinly sliced the garlic in caps. So there's an Italian in the group chat. <laughs> So he, he didn't shake his hand. And also there's Republicans um, who are against giving the cops at the Capitol Hill protest. Again, if you were listening to a right-wing comedy show, they would call it a Capitol Hill protest. And if you were listening to AOC's Instagram feed, she would say, Vietnam War! <laughs> and as usual, the truth is somewhere in between. I'd call it a riot. I don't know if I'd call it an insurrection. I guess they broke in. But when, I guess it is an insurrection from people. That's the insurrection you would expect from people who believe that Hillary Clinton is drinking uh, adrenochrome smoothies and, and uh, that Obama can shape shift into a reptile. I guess that's who you'd expect. A guy in horns with a painted face looking like he was at a Vikings game. So I guess you could call it an insurrection by Franks and Beans uh, QAnons, or you can call it a riot. Um, and a lot of these Republicans who are in the House don't want to issue Medal of Honors to these Capitol Hill police, which is what you call ironic, don't you think? Aren't, don't you guys, aren't you guys the Blue Lives Matter crew? So are you only in support of Blue Lives Matter when the cops are uh, fucking batoning Antifa? Because I'll be honest, I'm torn on that one too. You know, <laughs> whenever I see a purple headed kid get a baton to the knee, I'm like, maybe he shouldn't have been pushing that black umbrella onto that officer. Maybe he should have been spitting in his face. Um, but that's ironic. You know, that seems a little weird. I mean, where are the blue lives matter there? Um, there was even one congressman who was like, remember that woman who got killed at the riot? I mean, they should have all got killed. They broke into the fucking Capitol. You know, even if you think, even if you're a QAnon person, you think they were all Antifa because some of them are dressed in black. Don't you think the cops should have killed them all? I mean, if you break into the Capitol, you should get sprayed. One woman got killed and this guy was like, I demand to know who the officer was who killed that guy. And be honest, if that was a Black Lives Matter riot and some officer killed a woman, that congressperson would have said, stop resisting. <laughs> So, I mean, we can all see through this. You just got to hear it. You got to come to long days to hear it. And I know some of you believe uh, uh, what I just made fun of. Fuck you too. And I know some of you believe the opposite when I was making fun of AOC. Well, then fuck you too. This show should be called Fuck You Too. <laughs> come on. They were actors working for Soros. All you got to do is look down. What is it? Uh, ask and ye shall receive. Um, that goes with uh, the Lord and the internet. Ask and you shall receive. You want, a cra you want a crazy opinion or any opinion that runs the spectrum or runs the gamut? Just check the internet and ye shall receive. Uh, here's a good one from uh, it.weo says, that pepper spray was Miller Lite. <laughs> here's my question. Was that actually a Capitol Hill riot or did Zach Brown Band just plan a concert and then cancel? because <laughs> that crowd looked like it would be mad if Zach Brown bound canceled and they were supposed to play on the steps <laughs> yeah I mean it did look like uh, extras in a Bud Light commercial that like just got overheated and, and didn't get their pay and they were just a little upset they're like I'm fucking union so that's two that's two that is two for the Supreme Court back to the Supreme Court we got sidetracked because it is long days Yanni um, and the third one is um, the Supreme Court also rejected a lawsuit against Nestle. This is an interesting one, Drew. Okay. Now that you graduated uh, finger painting school officially, you're into the real world. 
we're going to talk about how the real world works a little bit. Um, Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast. This story takes us to the Ivory Coast, one of the hottest tourist destinations on the planet. Am I going to the Ivory Coast with my family? Yeah. I mean, I heard they got some of the most lit beaches, and I heard Lindsay Lohan's there fucking dancing like she got burned like a car cigarette lighter. I heard Lindsay Lohan's, Lohan's only worth $800,000 now. Where did her money go besides her dad and plastic surgery and booze and drugs? <laughs> <laughs> That's a rhetorical question. Um, those of you who don't know the Ivory Coast, I'm being sarcastic. The Ivory Coast is not a place where you are going to go and find a... You, you're not going to be able to use your Hilton points in the Ivory Coast. You're not going to be able to go to the Ivory Coast and just wing it, check hotel tonight, and find yourself a sweet three- or four-star uh, hotel for the night that has a pool. The Ivory Coast is in Africa. And they have farms there, cocoa farms, that Nestle employs contracts out to get chocolate women love chocolate does anyone do more harm mike to the continent of africa than women oh yeah they're the worst they're why every child has bloody hands exactly okay when you hold up a diamond engagement ring instead of saying <laughs> how many carat it is can why don't you just measure it in reality and say how many african children lost arms for that just go this is four missing arms so chocolate, and of course you need chocolate. I need my fucking chocolate. Oh my God, I'm in, a mood. I'm in a fucking naughty mood. I need chocolate. So Nestle um, was sued by some former uh, quote unquote slaves. Okay, because nowadays I don't think they call it slavery. They just call it eh, work or we kill you or something like that. <laughs> He's go, here's the deal. Is that your family? Okay, do you like them breathing? Okay, well, here's the deal. You're going to work for nothing. We're going to rake in huge profits from Nestle. Uh, the dictatorship that runs this country is going to look the other way because they're getting paid off by us, and we got a big contract with Nestle, and Nestle's going to pretend like they don't know what the fuck's going on because why would they? It's not in my backyard. Why do I care about it, right? Um, shout out George Carlin, right? He's like, yeah, you're not in my backyard. So these two, I think it was two former slaves said, hey, you know, Nestle was uh, knowingly uh, working with this company that knew that they were employing slave labor. Um, and the Supreme Court said, no, Nestle is not liable. This has nothing to do with Nestle. I'm going to give this one, fuck. I'm gonna, the human rights child of a human rights lawyer in me is going to give this a thumbs down. Okay, so I'm going to give the Supreme Court two thumbs down, one thumbs up. And I know that's going to get a lot of people on the right past. And I'm sorry, but fuck you too. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think they had any inclination? Let me see. If you're doing business with somebody, right? If you're doing business with somebody, like, somebody's de like if you're Sergio and you're buying Coke in Atlantic City, <laughs> okay? <laughs> You're going to meet the dealer on the street, right? So you may not know that what he's about to give you is baking soda and Clorox. <laughs> but that's your addiction taking over your reason. Because if you're meeting a guy at 4.30 in the morning by a dumpster <laughs> in Atlantic City, you know there's probably a 70% chance that it's not pure cut coke, right? You know, you know there's going to be a good chance that you're going to be going back to the hotel and at least sneezing or at the most dying, right? <laughs> you know if you're Sergio and you meet that dealer and you say, hey, man, give me your phone number and you're asking for that phone number because you don't trust that it's good because he is a Coke dealer on the street in Atlantic City by a dumpster at four in the morning, that you have a pretty decent intuitive inclination that this guy may be giving you bad drugs. So... I'm using that as an analogy for Nestle. If you are Nestle and you choose to work with farmers in the Ivory Coast, okay, who say, hey, you only have to pay us this for our cocoa. And they're going, that's pretty low. That's a lot lower than what they charge us in, let's say, Hershey, Pennsylvania, where there's <laughs> labor laws and, oh, I don't know, white farm workers. But you know what? I'm not going to ask any questions. 
because I like that price. And I read a few articles about the Ivory Coast. And I know it's a little choppy over there, a little bit of turbulence. And when, uh, when I sent a couple of my guys to go meet you guys over at the factory, he said you were executing children and cutting their arms off uh, if they were late with the cocoa beans. Um, but I said, shut, 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 shut up, shut up. That's not our business. <laughs> um, it's, you, pretty, you have a good idea of what you're getting in business, right? You got a pretty good idea what's going on over there. You're not thinking, uh, you're not bragging about it. You're not bragging about it to the AOC Human Rights Committee. Going, hey, listen, you have no business investigating Nestle. We work with this farm in the Ivory Coast, who's fucking clean as a whistle. Go check them out, okay? Their fucking farm workers are driving Teslas, for God's sakes. <laughs> and Nestle chocolate on, as, is on, ah, Nestle chocolate is a stepped on as Atlantic City Coke. It's not a stepped on. And you can give, give, you can give uh, emoji face a, come on, man, there. <laughs> great point it's whatever i started with words we got uh jesse people are starting to love that they actually want it louder like i can't hear it um because i bobble so many words queuing has no idea about the real greek homo yanni <laughs> nestle is run by swiss bankers what isn't run by swiss bankers really i mean if you invade switzerland by the way switzerland has no fucking army they're just protected by the richest most powerful people from all over the world um, because that's where everyone hides their money is in Switzerland. Swiss meetings in Switzerland must be the most private, international, peaceful meetings. It's like every oligarch from every country just sitting there smoking cigars, drinking adrenochrome, and having Swiss waffles, and just laughing and banging prostitutes from the Ivory Coast. That's the world. That's how the real world world works, Drew. Come on, man. Ocasio Cortez sounds like the name of a cartel from Peru that the DEA has been working with since the early nineties. Fair point, fives. Fair point. Ocasio Cortez does sound like a cartel. A cartel. Come on, man. A cartel. Come on, man. It does sound like a cartel. Yanni, fuck Cuomo. Take over New York so we could. Have press conferences and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's noteworthy, Drew. Ice Water 420. I like his name too. Uh, Sergio got Swiss Miss in them powder pags from Atlantic City. That's from our good friend <laughs> Fred Rob's Mental Playground. Um, I would love to fucking swim around in Rob's Mental Playground for a couple of hours. I bet you there's munchkins in there. There's mushrooms and trans boys and girls who are just living in bliss on a cloud above Arizona. Rob's Mental Playground is a fucking wild place. Imagine being in Rob's head. <laughs> I bet you the people who know Rob don't even do drugs. They just smell Rob and get high. <laughs> Like he's glue. Because, <laughs> I mean, that kid looks like he's jacked up on life. You ever, like, you ever see his pictures? And because you just, you're finishing the painting of the hyena in the bathtub for Squeaky Clean, my bonus episodes, patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Because the angle that you shot that at, I showed it to Jesse. He's going, what angle is that? And I said, that's a fucking Rob's mental playground. Because your life is Pee Wee Herman's playhouse. <laughs> Guys, there's only one way to mow down your fumes. And that's with our good friends over at Manscaped. Now, when I know you listen to a lot of podcasts, I know you got a lot of promo codes, but none of them teach you about fumes the way I have. You've grown up with me teaching you what fumes are, how to control them. I'm an expert, okay? If you got freaking insects, you got ticks in your yard, you call a mosquito tick guy, okay? You got bed bugs, you call a dog who smells bed bugs. You got fumes, you talk to me. And I tell you how to control those fumes. You use Manscaped. Manscaped has got the super juicy stuff only for you through my promo code, FUMES. F-U-M-E-S. And I got to spell that out because some of you are F and B incorporated. So you spell fumes with an F, a U, an M, and an E, and an S. Get the whole kit. They throw in a whole package for you. You get, uh, back, you get boxer shorts. You get a travel bag. Um, come on, cuz I, I'm wearing a box of shorts right now. Okay, they're they're fume proof. Get yourself the lawnmower 4.0 and all the products 
that come. Uh, you get the 4.0 uh, trimmer. You get the weed whacker, uh, the ear and nose hair trimmer, uh, the crop preserver ball deodorant, which you need, okay, because balls are just fumy. <laughs> balls are fumy. You get the crop reviver toner uh, and, of course, the boxers and the travel bag. So you get a bunch in your goodies. Go get yourself a care package uh, for ball maintenance with Manscaped at manscaped.com, promo code FUMES. Mow down those fumes with Manscaped. Anxiety is just a part of being an American in 2021 or an Australian or wherever you're listening to this. England, Ivory Coast, where I got a big fan base. Wherever you're listening to this, anxiety and stress is a part of life. I imagine your stress level is a little higher if you're in the Ivory Coast. So I'm pitching this extra hard for you if you live in the Ivory Coast. Get yourself some Sunday Scary CBD. It's good whether you live in the Ivory Coast or if you live in Beverly Hills. And ironically, I would assume someone in Beverly Hills is probably more anxious than someone living in the Ivory Coast because that's the irony of life. But we're all brothers and sisters of God. And we all need to replenish our calmness with nature's chemicals, CBD. Okay, CBD has medicinal properties that calm you down. If you're not taking CBD, it's like you don't have an iPhone in today's day and age. It's like you're, you don't have a fucking flat screen. CBD is a part of everyone's day now. You got a big meeting, you're nervous, take a little Sunday scaries. They come with the gummies, they come with the pills, they got some vitamins in there. Get the whole package. Go to, go to sundayscaries.com and to get 25% off your order, that's a quarter of the whole thing. Use the promo code Giannis. Two N's. Y-A-N-N-I-S. Promo code Giannis to get 25% off your CBD products from Sunday Scaries. Okay? Don't let the Scaries get you. Get CBD from Sunday Scaries. <laughs> AOC is a secret Cuban waiting to extradite Joey Diaz back to the motherland. Fair points. A lot of fair points on comment roulette today. Okay, which brings us to Juneteenth, of course. Um, our favorite should be holiday over here long days, and I'm not being facetious. Why the fuck is Juneteenth not a holiday? Okay? There's a National Chocolate Day. There's a Brother's Day. There's a Best Friends Day. Okay? Where Rob Gronkowski and Tom Brady fucking take a picture and throw it on the gram for likes. Why the fuck is there not a day celebrating the official end of slavery? I think for a country that was founded in individual rights and purporting to be a country that values freedom and a country that has that, the scorn of that original sin on its hands, you would think that would uh, be a little bit more important than, I don't know, Fucking Christopher Columbus Day? Some fucking Italian Spaniard who got kicked out of his mother's house? Can you trust an Italian guy whose mom told him get out? You can't. He's not a family man at all. The kid is a fucking Italian. He ends up in Spain? And there's a Columbus Day, cuz? I don't like it. I don't like it one fucking bit. What's another fucking cheap holiday we got that we celebrate? Oh, St. Patty's Day. St. <laughs> Patty's Day, a day where Chicago dyes its river green. <laughs> Girls named Megan fucking pull down their pants and piss on the asphalt. And I get drunk and punch another guy in the face until, uh, until Irish guys punch each other in the face until both their faces look like fucking pizza or they both look like that fucking off-duty cop in Boston who fought... Kimbo Slice. Because <laughs> an Irish guy's face in a fight will end up looking like a pizza before you put it in the oven every single time, and they will not go down. So, yeah, let's celebrate uh, St. Patty's Day uh, for Irish people who immigrated here. But, you know, if I was black people, I'd be pissed. Too. I'd be a little angry too, cuz. You know, Juneteenth is a dope holiday. Yeah. And I'd like to get Harriet Tubman on a fucking, on a fucking 20, okay? That would be dope. She built the Underground Railroad. 
That's dope. She was doing what Elon Musk is trying to do with his circle joint. <laughs> his circle train. What is he? He's trying to build like tunnels, right? For traffic. There she is. Harriet Tubman on the 20. I like that. Harriet Tubman. Yeah, we shouldn't use that pick, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she is a lady, and, you know, you shouldn't be thinking. You know who should design that? Uh, what are we doing here? <laughs> You're taking the worst photo. I mean, use your imagination. You don't got to use a real photo. You don't got to use a real photo of Harriet Tubman. She's a lady. She's not Abe Lincoln. She's not Alexander Hamilton. Okay? If you put Jesse or, or me on a 20, we're going to be fine. We're not going to be asking to see 20 photos. Has anyone ever taken a, a photo? Does anyone have a girlfriend or a friend that's a girl? Or have you ever taken a photo of a girl? They take the photo, and then they immediately look on the phone, and they more than likely delete it and say, take another one. So you're just going to choose the photo for Harriet Tubman, and the one that you chose is the day that she decided to dig the tunnel <laughs> I mean she's got fucking soot all over her cuz and she's got a do-rag on that's not her finest day come on if you're gonna put Harriet Tubman on the 20 use your imagination put the picture that Harriet Tubman would like okay not the one that you have first of all take the do-rag off put a nice little wig on her okay put a nice little black wig you know, go to the wig store, get yourself that good Indian hair wig, and then have Harriet Tubman itching it with a pencil like that. <laughs> I have worked with many black women, yeah. and they itch it like that with a pencil, and don't touch it. Have her sleeping like this with her head up. Shut out Martin Lawrence. You so crazy special. <laughs> Waking up once in a while, remember? Like she sleeps like that and wakes up and just goes like that. <laughs> yeah, black women, shout out to black women for how much they go through with not being able to itch their head. That's a lot. Yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. Fucking hook her up, dog. Here's another one. I mean, look, she's not in a Quentin Tarantino movie. Make the bitch look fly. <laughs> Put her in a Vera Wang dress. Use your imagination. She's a woman. She's a lady. Ladies care about their pictures. Oh, man. So it is Pride Month. Uh, you guys are going to suck some dick for Pride, or what are you doing? What are you doing to celebrate Pride? I'd be pissed too if I was black people that like, look, there's a pride month I'm, I support. They get a whole fucking month pride. Like at some point, like almost everyone accepts gay rights now, which is obviously a good thing. Um, but at some point, can we tell, can we tailor the festivities down to one day? I mean, there's only fucking Christmas is the Michael Jordan holidays. It's only a day and a half. I mean, do you guys need a whole month? to dance naked and can we move that parade to the nighttime because I want to bring my daughter and cheer and tell her how beautiful gay rights are but I don't want her to see men's asses and I don't know what gay rights have to do with you being naked okay there's fucking grandmothers walking around just because you like to fuck dudes doesn't mean you need to fuck the dude during the parade and at some point it's got to be just a gay pie parade in one day right i mean you can't just have a whole month forever dog where there's rainbow flags everywhere although i do think there should be a gay country because i think that country will be lit as fuck a great place to escape your your family to escape your child rearing children to escape the trappings of society like how about like we give Greenland, because Greenland's available, right? I think somebody's trying to buy that shit. Why don't we just let Rosie O'Donnell, Rosie O'Donnell, who's the funnest gay? Who's the funnest gay? Andy Cohen. Let Rosie O'Donnell and Andy Cohen fucking buy it with all their money. And it just becomes, the, 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 the rainbow flag is the country. So finally, gays have a country. Like Jews have Israel, gays have Gayland. And you go to Gayland, it is fucking lit. When you get on Gayland Airlines, it's fucking lit, dog. Okay? Okay? Madonna's, Madonna's in the aisle. Life is a mystery. With her scream mask face. <laughs> Everyone must stand alone. And then there's just gay guys just voguing, like all her backup dancers. Then, of course, there's a... Horrible, 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 horrible level of talent 
talent show because I don't know if you've ever performed on Fire Island like I have, but gay entertainment is the fucking worst. It's guys lip singing. It's a fucking lip singing show. <laughs> They're not even singing their own songs. The most impressive thing is that that guy makes me want to have him blow me. That's the most impressive thing about a drag show is I'm going, I'm fooled. <laughs> and then he goes out there and he sings, he sings um, Aretha Franklin's song. You're going, guy, that's not your song. The most impressive thing is seeing a six foot four guy look like a really hot girl doing a split. That's what I'll give you. But gays are not into like talent, right? They like Madonna. Is she the most talented? No. Who else do they like? Big gay icons. Um, uh, RuPaul. RuPaul. That, you know. But I'm talking about musicians. Who do they like? Uh, wh wh it's four straight guys trying to figure out what goes on <laughs> what goes on, on Fire Island. We don't know. We're like, oh, Depeche Mode? Uh, <laughs> Paul Abdul. Paul Abdul? <laughs> Probably, because she's, like, not a great singer. <laughs> <laughs> they always love people who are fabulous and good performers, but not like very talented vocalists. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean by it. Um, fuck, yeah. They love Gaga, I guess. But I think Gaga makes it more than it is. She mm -hmm. tries, she imitated and replicated Madonna so much. She's always like, my gay's out there. And I think the gay's are like, girl, we're not fucking into you. You can sing too good, okay? And look, we're into Madonna. She's a whore. We fucking love that because it's hilarious. And you, you just look like a girl named Camille from Long Island. Because have you ever seen, Jesse, have you ever seen Lady Gaga without her makeup? I don't have a mic, but... Dude, yeah. Lady Gaga without her makeup is the most unrecognizable celebrity you've ever seen. Lady Gaga without her makeup or any outfit on could walk anywhere and there's some cuisine guy going like, is that Camille? I think I finger popped that girl at fucking Edward R. Morrow. <laughs> without her makeup, she looked, she looked like she worked at Wendy's. Or she looked, worked at Wendy's, yeah. But she's definitely a New York, Staten Island, Long Island Italian girl and, and shout outs to her for not uh, Kardashianing her nose. She's got the fuck, she's got a true like Roman coin profile beak on her. I mean, her profile fucking looks like a coin. She looks like Caesar. Her nose is Caesar's. She's got Constantine's nose. I bet you she's got little fumes. Right? That just comes with the sauce, right? The acidity in the sauce. <laughs> Italian girls. You're, you're Italian, Jess. It comes with a little acidity. There's a little fumes there. Greeks too. I think it's the yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think it's only Japanese and Norwegian who come fumeless because it's like just raw fish and like, you know, stuff like that. German, German's got to have fumes. No, because it's just meat and applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> Sauerkraut. It's going to come with a little fumes. Um, so... Uh, yeah, there she goes. Look at her, Camille. I mean, do do Lady Gaga with no makeup. Just do a quick one. Quick Lady Gaga with no makeup. And you watching this show right now, go ahead and pause it. And uh, I mean, come on, cuz. <laughs> I mean, that's a girl. Look at her. That's a girl's Instagram profile. She went to Bishop Ford, and she dated <laughs> Nigel Husey and didn't tell her father. <laughs> that was an inside joke for me and Jesse. I mean, that looks like a couple of girls, you know. What's her name? Stephanie. I think she, yeah, Stephanie DeFranti. What's her last name? She looks like a girl who would fucking date Drew for a little while and be like, Drew, I love your fucking hair. Drew, I love your fucking hair, Drew. Are you going to be a firefighter like your father? It's like, no, baby. Here's the deal. Daddy likes finger painting. What's her name? Look how Stephanie's spelled, too. Oh, my God. Yo, this is fucking sauce monkey overload here. <laughs> Her real name is Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanati. <laughs> Holy shit. Germany. Holy fucking shit. Holy mackerel, cuz. You say that name, fucking Zeppelis, and <laughs> appear. You say that name, it's like saying, like, you know, when you say the, the leprechaun's name? You say that name, fucking gnocchi appears. How good is gnocchi? 
Ah, uh, Megan Rap- Rapani is a more handsome. Megan Rapani is more handsome than Gaga. Who's Megan Rapani? Oh, she's the um, she's the she's the handsome fella on the female soccer. Yeah. Megan, yeah, I said she's the she's the handsome fella on the female soccer team. Yeah, this dude. I mean, wouldn't she find that as a compliment, though? Would that be rude for me to say, what's up, guy? <laughs> I mean, that's what she's going for, right? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, she looks like trans Joe Biden, so. She does look oh, a little yeah, like yeah. trans Joe Biden. But no matter which way you slice it, I mean, that picture right there, she looks like a guy. She looks like a guy. She looks like Drew when he was 16. <laughs> oh man somebody said watch your fucking language mrs pappas is in the chat lady gaga will come see you in a different way um uh, uh, speaking of coming to see people in a different way uh somebody uh ice water for 20 wants me to know that uh, gizzling maxwell has a banging body (laughs) cuz and vice rocks wants me to know that he's got a leaning tower of pizza that's an honorable mention. Speaking of, uh, this is a real good one. You guys are going to love this one, brother. Can we pull up this story? Because this one's one of my favorite from one of my favorite states. America's penis. Flow rider, brother. A uh, lady running from Congress decided to threaten one of her competitors in the primary with being disappeared Uh, by her Russian-Ukrainian gangster connections. So here is a great story that you would only expect coming out of what can only be described as America's drug problem, Florida. Florida is the gift that never stops giving, and we like to call this segment here on Long Days with Yanni, What the Florida? In a secret recording, Florida Republican threatens to send Russian-Ukrainian hit squad after her rival. And she's a fucking piece on top of it. So... (laughs) Read that. uh, I really don't... uh, She she said, in a Florida accent, she's like, I really don't want to have to end anybody's life for good of the people of the United States of America. But if needs be done, it needs to be done. Uh, No, William Braddock. Okay, that wasn't her. That was the guy I think that was speaking on her behalf, right? Whatever the case may be, this bitch threatened to off somebody. Um, uh, It was a 30-minute call with a conservative advocate, activist that was recorded before he became a candidate. Oh, William Braddock. Oh, it was him. Yeah. I apologize. I fucking misgendered. I misgendered. My bad, my bad. It was actually William Braddock. Yeah, I thought that was even wilder that there would be a woman threatening that. Yeah. I'd be like, that, you know what that would have made her? Tanya Harding hot. <laughs> that would have made her. There's a category, Tanya Harding hot. Like a Amy Fisher who blew that bitch's face off. Yeah. Remember Amy Fisher hot? Mm-hmm. A bad, you know, there's a market for bad bitches too. It's not only stupid girls that want to marry Richard Ramirez. We all want to fuck Tanya Harding, too. The difference between men and women is, and I would say we're more moral in this sense, is that we don't want to marry Tanya Harding. We want to hate fuck her, pull her hair, hit her with a baton in the knees, and come on her face. You guys want to marry the Night Stalker. What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay? You want to dance with the possibility that he might bite your tit off. So William Braddock... Warned the activists to not support GOP candidate Anna Paulina Luna in the primary uh, for a Tampa Bay, of course, Tampa, of course, home of the stripper, uh, Tampa Bay congressional seat because he has access to assassins. I don't know why this is news. It's Florida. I think it would be news if he didn't threaten his his uh, rival. That uh, if he didn't threaten the rival. Um, with uh, assassination by Russian assassins. <laughs> That's more of a story in Florida, right? Yeah. This would be a story if it was in like a sane place. You know what I mean? But Florida, you're going like, yeah, of course. I mean, that's how the politics works down there. They threaten to kill each other with Russian assassins. <laughs> <laughs> they're so only anyway, mad they're not using American assassins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here and here's another fucking hypocrisy, Rush, uh, conservatives. You're fucking outsourcing for assassinations? What? We don't have any good American homegrown, USD approved? You uh, you gotta fucking go to Russia? You're sending jobs abroad to kill political rivals? 
And then you yell about China. That is the Chinaization of assassination. Unbelievable. Good point, Mikey. Appreciate. Appreciate uh, emoji face. Uh, Triller, dude. Triller is killing it right now. Okay? Killing it. Obviously, with the Jake Paul fight we know about. And uh, now, Joe Biden and Vladimir Putin. I uh, was a fucking Triller. Promoted this fight. And much like Triller's fights, it was a fucking dud. Came back with a draw. Split decision where um, Vladimir Putin, the most popular democratically elected <laughs> prime minister or president in the world's history. Besides Saddam Hussein, those two guys have won by margins of 95 plus each time they've run with no term limits. The people love them so much. The people have insisted that there's no term limits to their reign, to their time in office. So they just came back and issued a joint statement holding hands. Oh, this was so disappointing. You know, this was like when Jay Leno and David Letterman did that commercial together. You're like, I, it just was more fun when you guys hated each other. Like, we don't need to see that commercial. We don't need Jay Leno and David Letterman to get... To, to get along. We know you guys hate each other. I mean, you know, they just... And, and they just played the hits. They just played the fucking hits. Okay, they just go, hey, you know, despite our differences, we both understand that we shouldn't go to nuclear war and we're both committed to some new thing where we're going to stop nuclear proliferation um, because a nuclear war cannot be won and that's the only reason we're not beating the shit out of each other is because we don't want to die too um but we already know that because we've said that for fucking 40 years straight but the thing we're not saying is we are going to continue to use proxy powers to war with each other and we're going to continue to arm tyrants all over the world and fight through smaller countries where we murder innocent uh civilians in those countries and destabilize those regions because we hate each other America and Russia are like two fucking basic bitches who fucking just keep fighting and ruin everyone's fucking good time. It's like, is that bitch going to be there? Is that good bitch going to be there? And then they just fucking give each other bad energy so neither of the groups of friends that they're with who are actually mutually friends with each other can fucking have a good time. Because Russia's like, if you talk to that bitch, get out of my circle. And America's like, if you talk to that bitch, Get out of my circle. So all these girlfriends, all these beta bitch basic girlfriends who want to talk with each other won't because they're scared of their fucking alpha basic bitch leader, Russia and America, and they just fucking hang out in separate parts of the party and kill the whole fucking vibe and nobody gets any pussy because everyone is consumed with this fucking hate between these two alpha fucking... God. I feel like Ilan Omar. I just put down my own country. It's a false equivalency. I apologize. I'm apologizing right now for my lack of patriotism. There is one Russia, and there's one fucking Yas Queen, and that's us. And I side with those bitches who are with that Yas Queen, who are loyal to her, and don't want to talk to their own friends on the other side of the aisle who are friends with Putin because they're fucking loyal to fucking your Yas Queen. So, fuck ya. I'm just gonna say fuck ya. Fuck ya. The absurdity uh, of Putin's lies should be obvious thanks to Trump, isn't it? I mean, the media is really trying to throw that name in there whenever they can. It isn't. It sells tickets. The kid moves tickets. <laughs> yeah, he does. Okay, say what you want about how you feel about Trump. The kid sells tickets okay it's like you can hate on carrot top all you want the kid moves major tickets in vegas major fucking tickets um so that fight was a dud split decision came back a draw um you know there, there'll be opinion pieces up the ass about whether biden was hard enough on him not hard enough on him um, here's the deal. Putin's just tougher in person, probably. Um, Obama was the only kid who kind of gave him true attitude, I felt, the whole way through, right? Um, but yo, Obama knows uh, karate, right? 
Does Obama? Uh, no, uh, Putin knows ju- uh, jujitsu, right? And yeah. he he rides on fucking horses b- without a shirt on. He could fight. He could fight. He likes to. Yeah, I mean, dude, you just don't fuck with the Russians. You don't fuck with the Russians. I mean, look at Vladimir Putin. He's got his eyes are closer together than me. Yeah. He's got he's got close together eyes, which was why we're both tyrants. Look at Joe Biden. He looks like he's wearing a Sesame Street puppet head. Doesn't his head look like a puppet head? Yeah, like looks like it's put boy. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a Muppet a little bit. And he's meeting Putin. Putin's a smaller guy. Um, but you know he gripped that shit hard. Do you think he said in Russian, like, what's up, Gramps? Or do you think he said, come on, man? <laughs> so nothing gets solved. Nothing gets solved. Um, John Stewart was on Colbert. Um, there's the there's the picture of the summit. He looks like he's sleeping. Yeah, I mean they're still socially distancing. Like that's funny. Yeah, it's really like, uh, come on guys, just sit next to each other, or maybe they just like use it as an excuse because they hated each other that they can just say we're socially distancing, but really they want to. You know, Putin smells like vodka, dog. <laughs> there's no way that kid doesn't hit it. Russian kids love vodka. That's their thing. Biden has a professional MMA fight coming up. Biden gives off Hufflepuff energy. (laughs) Joe Biden, the first elected animatronic prez. (laughs) Bring Ku Klux Klissy on the show. Obama just sang from the rooftops of a Middle Eastern wasteland, it's time to pray, muzzies. So you look down, you get all walks of life watching my show. Dade Cash says Putin smells like sawdust and gasoline. <laughs> Yanni looking extra cute, but also extra Franks like Robert Downey syndrome. <laughs> Harris versus Putin camel toe versus bare knuckles bra. So there you go. Um, here's, the, here's the fun story I wanted to get to before we move on to our fun, fun, fun closing. Um, I watched a documentary two nights ago about Erica Jane. Have you guys heard about this story? Erica Jane is a real housewife. Now, real housewife it, uh, is responsible for killing more brain cells in women than vodka sodas okay it is just awful entertainment and they uh they watch it like the manchurian candidate they just a uh, gloss comes over their face and they just watch this absolute utter horseshit um and then they blame us which is what i love i love women blame us uh we're judging you you're judging women um we're sexualizing them Men haven't asked you guys to do a goddamn thing. You guys do it all on your fucking own, okay? Because Us Weekly is not read by men. Do you guys know one man who has ever purchased an Us Weekly? (laughs) Do you know one man who's ever purchased the Cosmopolitan where women are airbrushed and all that bullshit that they complain about? Do you know one man who who gives a flying fuck about a woman's flaws that need to be airbrushed? No. Men fucks. Just to quote Patrice O'Neill, which I love. um, If a woman's... uh, Men have conversations like this. Hey, man, if a bitch didn't have a nose, would you fuck her? And it usually goes, yeah. (laughs) You guys do this to each other because you're competitive for men. This is evolutionary theory. There's not a lot of good dudes. You guys are all going for the alpha guy. Uh, This used to be common sense before the woke era where it's like, huh, why does Derek Jeter, why does Derek Jeter have a level of pussy named after him? Why does Derek, why do they call it Derek Jeter level pussy? Why does he fuck the most beautiful women and so many of them and they don't seem to mind that he moves on to another one and they don't seem to mind that he leaves them with a classy little fruit basket in the morning with a note that says, get the fuck out of my house and sign this NDA. 
<laughs> and they don't seem to mind because they got to spend the night with fucking Derek Jeter in his fucking White Plains penthouse. Why don't they seem to matter? It's because they're all trying to fuck Derek Jeter. They're not all looking. They're not going, you know what? I watched The Notebook and I'm just looking for a guy who's going to free me. I want to find my Leonardo DiCaprio from Titanic who's going to rescue me. Rescue me from the pangs of aristocracy. Yeah. Yeah. If that's, what, if that's how women were, fucking Zales would be out of business tomorrow. <laughs> if all the women were like Kate Winslet in Titanic or Adam Anzlel in The Notebook, whatever her fucking name is, Amy Adams. Okay, who cares? She's 40 now. <laughs> You think when 40, when 40, 40 is like um, 40 for a woman in Hollywood, just start your own podcast. Yeah. Start a podcast, dog. If you want to rebel against the evilness of Hollywood and how they don't make you work, they don't work you after 40, um, start a podcast like Anna Faris. That bitch has got a popular podcast. She's over 40, still bangable. You know what I mean? It's Hollywood that did that, not men. Men in Hollywood, evil ones. But you can't malign a whole sex because of what a couple of dudes who drink adrenochrome do. <laughs> They're the ones who fucking throw you out, throw you out with the garbage when you're 40. <laughs> they fucking really. When 40 comes around, they go, they go, hey, honey, take the garbage out. It's garbage day. They fucking walk you down the driveway to the curb and say, thank you very much for your service, Amy Adams, but we are done with you. <laughs> you may one day be able to play um, Will Smith's daughter's mom <laughs> yeah, with a black husband. Sorry, I'm itching my uh, nose because I do coke. <laughs> I don't do coke, which is I, it's weird because I itch my nose again. Um, so Erica Jane is beloved. Okay, even my wife goes, don't be too hard on her. I love her. <laughs> and I said, before I watch a documentary, I go, why do you love her? And this is what my wife said, a very intelligent woman, college educated. Her father is a doctor, okay? She goes, she says what's on her mind. She says what's on her mind. She's just kind of real. If, if there's a such thing as a fucking oxymoron on television, it's calling someone on The Real Housewives real. He, the only bitch who was ever real on The Real Housewives was Angie. And that's because she had throat cancer and she sold sauce at the 3rd Avenue Festival in Bay Ridge. <laughs> right before she died. The bitch died two months later. I saw her on 3rd Avenue at the fucking fair of Bay Ridge selling her sauce. Okay? And she talked like Miley Cyrus. <laughs> hey, how's it going? My name's Angie. I'll fuck you up. She was a girl who would make you suck her dick. Fucking, there's only one all-star from the Real Housewives, and that's Real Housewives, New Jersey, Angie. Look at that bitch. Well, that's mob wives, no? Yeah, mob wives, whatever, same fucking thing. Yeah, look at Angie. Look at the liposuction in her face. And the irony of that is you know in Angie household, she said a few things about black people. You know, Angie's house was not the most woke when it came to cultural, uh, cross-cultural experiences. And then look at what Angie herself did to her lips. She made them fuller. That's the funny thing about racist people is like, that is true. And I've heard that many times. It's like the most racist people kind of envy black people the most. Do you remember, Jesse, remember we were growing up like Italian kids who hated black people would wear starter jackets and draw designs in their head and be like, get out of my fucking neighborhood because my, you know, I got a fucking Kwame design right here. <laughs> They would say, get out of my fucking neighborhood uh, uh, to, to an NWA song. <laughs> you say, you can't date my sister because you're black. And he'd be listening to NWA in a car with designs in his fucking head and fades. <laughs> nobody dressed more like black kids than Italian kids. And nobody was more racist against black kids than Italian kids when I was growing up, which is hilarious. And you know fucking Angie threw a couple of M-bombs around her fucking Staten Island living room. And then she went and she got a fuller face. She looks like precious. <laughs> Look at those fake bombs. Yeah. So Angie, uh, not surprisingly, can we just pull up her voice for a second? Not surprisingly, I think, died from cigarette cancer. Yeah. Yeah. And when you hear her voice, you'll see why. Okay. 
She sounds, um, who's the lead singer from Pearl Jam? Jesus Christ. Eddie Vedder. She sounds like Eddie Vedder. She sounds like Eddie Vedder grew up in Howard Beach. <laughs> she sounds like if Eddie. We don't want to watch a commercial drill. I know. We're making content, cuz. Let's hear her. And I'm looking forward to meeting another one. <laughs> you think she had a few fucking slim jibs? We're out partying with the guys like we were 21. Lynn, I'm up here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh God, Angel. Okay, so that's Big Edge. Do you think she's had a few Virginia Slims in her day? <laughs> she laughs like Joey Diaz. She laughs like Joey Diaz. She sounds like Joey Diaz, and she looks like Joey Diaz. <laughs> she's called the Triple Threat. Uh, you could picture her waking up. Uh, you could picture her uh, in the morning on her gram going, Good morning, cocksucker. <laughs> it's a good day to sling some deck. It's Angie. <laughs> so I actually saw Angie in Bay Ridge. Me and my wife used to go to the Third Avenue Fair every year. And, and Angie, Big Angie, was selling her sauce in front of uh, Leo's Calamari. So, and then she died three. That, that's a girl dedicated to the grind. Like, she probably was in cancer treatment, but the bitch was going to sling some jars of fucking sauce. So she sold sauce. So she's the only goat. Let's be honest. She's the goat of the Housewives crew. Everyone fucking, if you're not into Big Ange, Big Ange was real, okay? Because Big Ange knows where a couple of bodies are buried in the canal. <laughs> and uh, Big Ange looks like she's handled some fucking mob business herself. <laughs> but um, but uh, Erica Jade, Erica Jane, Erica Jane. So this bitch, okay, now here's the big controversy. Did Erica Jane know? Did she know about her very famous lawyer husband, Tom Girardi's stealing of money from his clients? This is a big deal. I just recently found out that Erica Jane's lawyers have refused to represent her. Not a good sign. As Tim Dillon would say, not good. So let me tell you what the story is. Erica Jane, who's a, uh, how do you call it? Gold digging whore, <laughs> as most of the housewives are. Why don't they just change that show name to I'm a gold digging whore uh, who lives off of a man's money? Um, and my, my wife's probably, that's not true. Did you see Samantha from season seven in Atlanta? She's got a fucking cosmetic line. Um, and, and Erica Jane was a boss bitch. So Erica Jane, who's beloved by the gay community because she's a horrible singer, decided to become a singer. I mean, we'll put one of her songs up in a second, but she, be be she decided to become a pop star recently. Who the fuck knows why? She needs more attention. First of all, she's married. This is his third, uh, uh, Tom, Gi Giardi's, Tom uh, Giardi's third fucking wife. She's about 40 years younger than him. The guy, the, the, the guy looks like fucking. Come on, man. Come on, man. Don Rickles. <laughs> the guy looks like Don Rickles. Okay, and look at this. I mean, she can't be a day over fucking 35. And she's married to a guy who's like 80. Uh, you know, he's probably at one point was worth 80, 100 million dollars. Now, supposedly what Tom Girardi does, he was a very powerful lawyer in Los Angeles, California, who had a law firm that did some very high profile cases that you might have heard about, one of which being Aaron Brockovich. The movie, uh, he was, you know, he's portrayed the movie Aaron Brockovich. He represented Aaron Brockovich. He got clients money who were wronged by big companies. People who were burned from gas leak pipe shit. Like, he did a lot of good, got a lot of people money. He was a do-gooder, an angel. And he was a beast. And very powerful. Uh, big in politics. You had to, you had to really uh, get in with Tom Jardy. Even judges would bow to him. Um... And so he married this gold digging whore who had a good slice of puss puss. And she decided, you know what, Tom? Um, I want to become a puppet, a pop singer. Yeah, she's just some whore from Florida. 
Let's be honest. Where is she from? She did nothing in her fucking life except spend his money. And when you see the grossness of the Real Housewives episodes or the interview she does where she's touring people around their fucking mansion where she has like a whole rooms full of fucking shoes and she's wearing all these diamonds and they have this massive estate somewhere in the adrenochrome hills of Hollywood and she's showing it off. It makes it even worse to know that the money this motherfucker was stealing from these poor clients that he was handling because he handles it. That's what a lawyer does. Handles the settlement money and then doles it out for his clients. This motherfucker was stealing it. And then when the clients were calling going, hey, I have a, I have a doctor's appointment. I need some of that money. He was going, are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? Here's what happened. I can't. The thing is, you're a young man of 16. And, and he was referencing some judge who had nothing to do with anything. He was like, what Justice Thomas says is that, you know, we don't, we see so many young men spend this on sneakers and we don't want to give you the money out of the trust so you'll spend it on sneakers. So I'm just going to hold it for another forever because my wife is using it for her career to be a singer. So gay people can show up and go, yes, queen, yes, yes, queen, yes, yes, queen, yes, queen. Her songs were expensive to be me. It's expensive to be me. No, it's easy to be you because you're a fucking gold digging whore you're a fucking criminal gold digging whore and we know you knew about it we know you knew about tom girardi stealing all those people's money you gold digging fucking whore there's kids in the hallway she's a 49 who she starts like a career at 49 a gold digging whore who's not satisfied with private planes <laughs> diamonds and jewels I'm sorry, Drew, can you get me that plate? I apologize. She's I, from I didn't Atlanta. mean to throw it at you. I meant to throw it at the camera. She's from Atlanta. But you know what? If that thing would have touched your hair, I think it would have stopped like a force field. Like the plate would have just stopped and your hair would have said, back the fuck up, cuz. I think your hair would have said to the plate, back the fuck up, cuz. She's a gold digging whore is what my point is. So Tom Giardi, Tom Giardi's been caught. He's been caught stealing millions and millions and millions of dollars from the trust he was supposed to be managing for his clients who won settlements against unscrupulous corporations or unscrupulous accidents, etc. And the majority of this money was traced to her entertainment company that was backing her career. So he was backing her dumb pop career. Why? Because he's an old fuck and she's got good puss. So whenever fucking women talk about how the patriarch is unconscious, you understand that men do whatever they do for puss puss. If you don't give us the puss puss, or if you don't let these gold digging whores get the rich dick, there will be no problems. There would be no problems. If women got together and said, unify these pussies, okay, from now on, there will be no gold digging whores. We will be, we will have a unionized pussy and any gold digging whore, scab, picket, picket line crossing whore tries to pass our union, we will beat that scab pussy with baseball bats. If there was a pussy union that prevented gold digging whores from getting into business like her, it would be no problem. My wife told me to go easy on her, which made me go extra hard on her. <laughs> this documentary pissed me off because this guy's robbing money from his victims. And people are going to go, why are you blaming her? That's the misogynist thing. Come on, man. <laughs> you telling me she didn't know about it? They were in coots. Fuck him too. He's obviously the number one fucking piece of shit in this. Obviously. Okay, I should have made that clear. Tom Girardi, fuck you. Fuck you. You deserve to get put into a fucking hall. I should put you in a fucking hall, you Jew motherfucker. Yo. He's not even Jewish, he's Italian. That's from the movie Casino. You remember that, remember that scene? Yo, Jew motherfucker, if it wasn't for you, then it would be every gangster would have a piece of your Jew ass. Um, but he, he's an Italian kid. Um, but uh, she's, she's to blame a little bit, no? What, would you guys blame her a little bit? Do you think she knew about the money? Oh, for sure. They've been married 20 years. She probably told them to get more. Do you think, what do you think, Jess? You could just nod or no. Yeah, that's the safest way to do this. <laughs> I don't know what this is. You know, when you got to have a hard stance, there's a good chance you could be wrong. But that doesn't matter. I'm not a reporter. I can malign her character. Sue me. What are you going to take? My fucking, uh, this, this fucking junior one bedroom that's turned into a studio? What are you going to take from me? 
Now, here's my favorite part. This is the part where we switch to Tom Giardi about how much of a piece of ass, piece of an asshole he is. So, this is my favorite. You're going to like this, Jess. Tom Giardi's lawyers are now, they are pleading that he has dementia, Alzheimer's. They're saying he has Alzheimer's. And one former colleague and lawyer on the documentary is going, you know, I watched Tom Giardi about two months ago give a speech in front of 3,000 people. He didn't seem like he had Alzheimer's to me. Now, here's the deal. My mom had Alzheimer's. I know what the symptoms of Alzheimer's are. Um, when did one of the symptoms of Alzheimer's become stealing millions of dollars to give to your gold digging wife to have her R&B career take off for the gay community? I thought Alzheimer's symptoms were wandering and leaving the stove on, but no, apparently taking money out of a bank account of your client and giving it to your gold digging wife is a fucking symptom of Alzheimer's. Who fucking knew they need to rewrite the desk. They need to rewrite. If you're good, whoever's in control of Wikipedia, please go to Alzheimer's symptoms and say wandering, confusion, sundowning, stealing hundreds of millions of dollars from your victim clients. A big symptom of Alzheimer's. So I get it. He's going to win, of course. And here's the deal. You know when you steal millions of dollars, like the, 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 the irony is the, the sentence is less. You steal, a, you steal a Twix bar out of a bodega, you'll do like a year. You steal $50 million from some kid who was, has 80% burns all over his body because of some gas pipe explosion because of uh, negligence on the gas company. You're going to, what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to sit in some country club and people are going to write a book about you and some woman is going to want to marry you. So... That's the real world, Drew, that you're entering. This is the real world. It's a real housewives world, and we're all just living in it. Now, for our small business shout outs. <laughs> Speaking of gold digger horse, <laughs> you're looking at one right now. We. <laughs> We are, can you pull up that promo code for uh, Eastside Cheese Gifts? I sent you a screen grab. You too, Mikey. One of you guys. Um, so uh, first of all, welcome um, emoji face to uh, Mike Suarez. I will be in Tampa. I will be in San Antonio. Mike Suarez will be with me. The great emoji face um, will be performing with me. Um, uh, go to GiannisPapasComedy.com for those tickets. San Antonio, Tampa. I'll also be in Richmond, Virginia. I'm going to be at Soul Joel's for one night doing Morisa, doing the character show, probably Panos 2, on July 30th in Royersford, PA. Um, what am I forgetting? Go to my website, GiannisPapasComedy.com. Um, Eastside Cheesecakes. You want the, the blonde days. I want the Wasla yeah. 15 off. 15? 15. 15%. Eastside Cheesecakes is not national yet because of shipping prices, but they're getting they're getting together and will be soon. But if you're in the Los Angeles area, or I guess maybe in California, whatever it is, uh, go to their website, follow them, Eastside Cheesecakes uh, on the gram, uh, Eastside Cheesecakes website, eastsidecheesecakes.com, because it is absolute dessert porn. They just made that key lime pie cheesecake for me. Go look at those pictures. They're insane. They're sending it. They're sending it to us and they know they got to send it to us on a date. We're going to shoot. We're going to eat it on the show. They're sending it um, to our P.O. box, which is just Jesse's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can get that jesse so it will be coming um support julia and greg man i mean these are two two a couple that uh people who uh, couples who make cheesecakes together stay together and their cheesecakes are incredible dude and they started this during the pandemic so this was born out of the pandemic just like my daughter and uh i can't wait to try this cheesecake so uh go to eastsidecheesecakes.com order their cheesecakes they're delicious they're fucking hand and homemade they make their own cream cheese they do not fuck around just go look at the gram and you'll see for yourself it's incredible um and with the promo code long days, long days put it in 15 percent off your cheesecakes we're brought to you by Blue Agave on 3rd Avenue where we're going to go have Drew's fucking graduation party, get him some quesadillas. <laughs> I got hit up by uh, 
three fans who have gone to Blue Agave. One guy goes, yo, cuz, what's your drink when you go to Blue Agave? I said, mojito. He goes, yeah, I, that's what I got. So Blue Agave on 3rd Avenue, owned by the great Joseph DeMonte. Uh, all one word, Blue Agave on Instagram. Go check it out. Go visit Bay Ridge, walk around. It's a beautiful neighborhood. And then go to Blue Agave, uh, an amazing like uh, fucking Mexican restaurant. The food is really good. Then we're brought to you, of course, uh, big shout out to exclusiveautoshipping.com. If, you, if you're uh, moving anywhere and you got to move your car anywhere, you got wheels, they need to be moved. Okay, you got a peg leg with a wheel on it, call this fucking guy, uh, Jared Z. He's, he's a fucking cute Jewish kid and he's fucking screwed in. And I think this is a big company again. So hats off to you, you screwed in. Uh, get your free quote uh, and, uh, and they are nationwide. So anywhere you're moving to, they will move and ship your car for you. Uh, exclusiveautoshipping.com. We're brought to you, of course, by Rob's Mental Playground. Rob'sMentalPlayground.com. Support this kid. He doesn't even have a fucking business. He's got a fucking gram. And he's got, a, he's, got an, he's, he's got an itching for art, and he's wild. He's my favorite kid. Rob'sMentalPlayground.com. YouTube, Rob's Mental Playground. On the gram, Rob's Mental Playground. Go buy a t-shirt or print. Buy something from him. So, you know, that if you want to be a fan of the show, buy something, take a picture of it. I'll repost it. Rob's Mental Playground. Um, of course, we're brought to you by the good guy himself. <laughs> Mr. Max, Mr. Good Guy Long, cuz. Kid's got a nice little fucking sweet house that he showed me on his video in Palm Springs. He's got a, he's got a, a nice pool and he's got a better truck where he works out of. So if you have any problem with your refrigerator and you're in Seattle or Palm Springs, you call a good guy, not a bad guy. Call Good Guys Refrigeration. At, uh, check them out, goodguysrefrigeration.com. Check them out on the gram, Good Guys Refrigeration. Max, Mr. Good Guy Long, we love you, dog. And a special, special glue gun shot out. Glue Gunner. This is a special business, baby. We're talking about Mike Milanov, who is otherwise known as Dimitar. My glue gun is bigger than Yanni the Bulgarian Stallion. Wasting money equal to five small business sponsors. Bulgaria is better than Greece. Milanov. Shout out to the Bulgarians out there. I guess this kid's a Bulgarian or he loves Bulgaria. Maybe he went to Bulgaria and he fell in love with a prostitute. And he said, you know what, let me shout out this nation because they got good puss puss. I don't know your story, but Mike Milanoff is a cute kid. You have to follow him on the gram. He's a wild boy. Go follow him now. Do it for long for the long haul nation. Go to Thix Nation. That's his Instagram. That is T-H-I-X Nation. All one word. That's his Instagram. Go check him out. Follow him and DM him and tell him he's wild or say whatever you want to him about Bulgaria. Thank you, Mike Milanov. Now for the Patreon names. Everybody, you know the deal. Go to patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Become a long hauler. Um, get the bonus episode every week of Squeaky Clean. And also, guess what we just added? Uh, we're a little bit of a network now. So we just added a very big get. Marisa, the Rigorous Podcast is back. All new Rigorous Podcast with Marisa uh, and her co-host Sergio, um, whenever he's around, will be now available for the $5 members. Yeah. So you get Squeak Clean and Rigorous Podcast at the lowest tier. And then, of course, you get the additional video uh, content at the higher tiers. Go enjoy. Go over there. Go to the Discord, the Yanni Long Days Discord. Talk to the fans. Have fun. We have a blast over there. Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Join. Come on. Be an active fan. Now, for our Patreon names. When you sign up, you get your name read no matter what tier you join. So, welcome to the Long Haul Gang, our new Long Haulers, Brandon, Ben Hartman, Michael Squire, Mark Palmieri. Uh, then we got tickling my prostate gland is my brand, but make no mistake, I leave no trace on a monogaloid's face. <laughs> monogloid. I think, did he spell mon? Is that how you spell monogloid? I think he went to mon mongoloid, but he mongoloid. Got monogloid. <laughs> mongoloid. He did. I just read it wrong because I'm fucking Franks. So tickling my prostate gland is my brand. That would have been a winner there. 
You would have won. Nobody's beaten this. That, you would have won. This is how good this is. Usually the long ones, I always go, ah, you should have stopped. But this was good there and then got better. Tickling my prostate gland is my brand. Home run. But make no mistake, I leave no trace on a mongloid's face. So that's a double winner. Then we got Alex Jenis, Dunloy94, Kevin Black, Elizabeth Reuter, She's, a, she's the news organization. Garrett Wright, Michael Vandenberg, Curtis Staunton, Logan Longballs. <laughs> <laughs> Major chicken figure. <laughs> Logan Longballs. Then we got Tim McGrath. Then we got Yanni Long Days makes my day. I want to come. No. No, you're not getting the rest of that red, you fuck. Uh. Gabrielle Owens, Steven Greiger, Brandon, Pablo, Chris DeStef, yes, Lie TV, <laughs> the Bustin' Nuts in Butts, Serbian Toot with Dobro Fumes, Dobro, 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 Kako say, right, the Bustin' Nuts in Butts, Serbian Toot with Dobro Fumes, but may start another world war. It was a good try, dog. You just had to work that out. You had to work that one out. The busted nuts and butts is good. Serbian toot with Dobro fumes, but may start another world war. That was almost there. Father Bill fed me a pill, and when I came to, I was coated in glue. Home run. Home run. Amanda Hart, Eric Gool. Oh, my God. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> another hall of famer wow i i you may be the front runner now i think you won lacy bradley peace lacy some peace then we got uh holden manley suvlaki jockey playing tonsil hockey with maurice's cocky <laughs> That's number one all time. I think that's number one all time. Suv Suvlaki Jockey playing tonsil hockey with Maurice's cocky. <laughs> I think that's number one of all time. I think including hyenas, that's number yeah. one of all time. So first of all, that's another one where Suvlaki Jockey would have been funny. Mm -hmm. But playing tonsil hockey with Maurice's cocky? <laughs> Because you're number one. You're the winner maybe all time. And you're you're the GOAT now. People got to chase you. Then we got Donnie T in Kamala's pantsuit. <laughs> God, this list is turning out to be... They're starting to pick up. Yeah, These names are starting to pick up. Then we got Mike D. Welcome from the Beastie Boys. Um, then we got Michael. Then we got Nuke This Shithole Already Please. <laughs> Very funny. Then we got Michael Torado, uh, Alexis, Alexis Ramos Gonzalez, Allison, uh, Matt D. Cosgrove. Welcome back, because I recognize you. Cynthia Maj, Kenneth Baldado, Trisha K. Peace. And Michelle Padham. Peace. So welcome. Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Tell your friends about Long Days and also... Thank you for becoming a long hauler. We'll see you next week.